Um, uh, for those I haven't met yet, personally, I'm Doug Melvin. Uh, this is DAC Global, and truly, truly, truly excited for you to be here. Thank you so very much uh, for taking the time away from families, everyone, to be here. This is an amazing event. Over the next two days, you're going to have the opportunity to see something that, frankly, you've never seen before and is truly, truly exceptional. We also want to welcome, and the reason why we're doing this presentation in this particular room rather than a more personal environment, we have many of our friends and colleagues from around the world that are also joining us this evening from 13 different countries. Uh, we have presidents, prime ministers, your excellencies, thank you, uh, a number of honorable ministers that are joining us this evening. Uh, to see this presentation and discuss the Solgen system. We've given the opportunity for everybody, not just this evening, but over the next two days, to ask whatever questions you need to do, to be completely satisfied with both the functionality of the system, the reliability of it, and the ability to really uh, provide what you're looking for, pollution-free energy, reliable, low-cost energy, and we're happy and excited to show that with you. Uh, we'll also be able to entertain questions from our colleagues around the world, who are many of which um, I am very, very grateful for you staying up at, uh, in some of the places at 3 o'clock in the morning to, to hear this. Uh, I promise to be as entertaining as I possibly can, but uh, we'll see how it goes from there. But anyway, um, just some administrative notes. Uh, there will be time to see the unit as many times as you care to see it. So once again, Tomorrow, the next day, you have the opportunity to see the unit in what I, would see, what I would characterize as one of the most unprecedented opportunities, meaning um, ask whatever you want. We have with us this evening all of our technical experts that really, over, over a lot of hard work, some over many multiple years, developed this system. And you have the opportunity to interact with them. You have the opportunity to ask questions tonight. This goes for our colleagues that are also, uh, worldwide, we're going to have some questions that are going to be sent in via webcast. We'll share those with you. They may be some of the same questions you have in your mind. Uh, they're at a little bit of disadvantage because they're physically not going to be here with you for the next two days. But they, uh, their questions may be relevant to what you're doing. Um, you're looking at the screen right now. That happens to be one of our pet elephants by one of our projects in Kenya. Um, this, this, this particular elephant is... Uh, uh, and he has his, some of his friends with him, is a, uh, we have a water project which goes to kind of the core of, of what we are as a company. And we do a number of humanitarian-based projects worldwide. This particular one is a village in Kenya where we've put a, we provide water and energy for a small village. It's about a three-day journey outside of Nairobi, Kenya. And we put a water trough for elephants. And... Um, you know, everyone said when I first said, well, okay, that's what we're going to do. And they said, God, that's a, Doug, that's a bad idea. You don't want to do that. You're going to get elephants. They're going to break down the fence, and they're, they're going to get closer to your water system, and, you know, you're going to have all kinds of problems. And it's been the contrary. You find uh, elephants are actually quite respectful and quite appreciative of uh, clean water that they get. So this guy's enjoying some wonderful water, and they, they are a bit of a mess, but they, uh, they are very, very welcomed of it. So with that, let me talk about what we've come here tonight to speak of, and that is the Solgen system. What you see on the screen before you is an actual picture of what that unit looks like. I'm going to talk later about what you're going to actually see, and it's a little bit different. And there's some specific reasons why the unit you're going to see over the next two days is different. For those not familiar, DAC Global uh, is the company that, that, that we represent here tonight. Um, I happen to be the owner and founder of that company. Uh, DAC Global shares a, a partnership with DAC Associates, which is also an uh, independent company, but a security company. We enjoy the opportunity to partner with DAC Global in all of the countries where we do our projects. That gives us the opportunity to ensure the stability both of the country from a security perspective but enables us to um, have a very unique, special relationship where we have projects around the world. Uh, we're quite proud of the fact that we have a uh, UN certification. We're one of a few companies that actually enjoys a very special relationship with the United Nations. That's our uh, UN preferred vendor ID number. We are a, a group of about three or four companies that has a that is shortlisted for both security matters as well as energy and water throughout the world. 
Um, our, ex our expertise, as we talk about this evening in, in DAC Global, is really water, clean water, and renewable energy. I shared kind of our little story about the, uh, the elephants, um, but we do this in a number of different countries around the world, and we're quite proud of what we do from a humanitarian basis to help uh, those in need of both clean water and, uh, and energy. Um, part of why we're here is kind of that last bullet on the screen. You know, we're constantly looking for improving technology, improving the way we do things. And I will tell you one thing that kind of led us to where we are today, and you see some of the, the uh, projects up on the screen where we, where we are currently. But, you know, we started going down the solar energy route, and I'll call it traditional solar for lack of a better word. And what I'm referring to is the opportunity to overcome some of the challenges with solar energy. And those in this room, I, I imagine most of us are familiar with the fact that solar energy takes an enormous amount of land to really be effective, right? We have a project, you see that one on the screen, which is a, a gold standard project. We're quite proud of that. So is the country of Pakistan where we're doing this project. They're quite proud of the uh, UN designation as well. But it's a project of 2,200 megawatts of traditional solar. If we would implement that project fully, and we've started that project in traditional solar, it now will convert to SolGen, but we'll talk about that in a moment. But if we complete that project in traditional solar, it will encompass 11,000 acres of land. Think about that, right? How do you go to island nations? How do you go to small, other small countries where land is at a premium and say, here's a good deal for you. You need 2,200 megawatts of energy, but guess what? It's going to take you 11,000 acres, right? It's not a good proposition, and a lot of countries can't do that. Additionally, for the benefit of solar, and, I, and for years I've been a proponent of solar energy, is to say, great, solar energy takes off that little blip on top of the screen during the day of when you can really do that. Well, that's helpful, but it's almost in some regards, and I've had these conversations with regulatory bodies worldwide, and you sit down and say, great, let's talk about energy, let's talk about how you can help, and at the same time they say, okay, great, that's wonderful, you guys on the alternative energy side, we'll talk about it after we really figure out what, how we're going to meet our needs of what the country needs, right? Never before, and this is really important, never before could you talk about alternative energy and baseload energy for a country to meet their baseload needs in the same sentence. You can now, and you're going to have the opportunity to see that tomorrow and the next day. And I invite you to make sure that you take that opportunity, take full advantage of it, and ensure that you ask all the questions answered that you have. It's an exciting time. It's an amazing concept. It's an amazing product. I don't say that just because it's ours. It's the truth. Excuse me. As I talked before over the next two days, once again, um, I can't say it any stronger other than just, look, unprecedented access. We've specially designed this demonstration to provide that. Please take us, take us up on that. Um, we're looking for partnerships. We're looking for the opportunity to move forward. We're looking for solving your problems in the energy sector and ensuring that, uh, that we move forward in a very positive manner and a very effective manner. I know a lot of you have questions, concerns uh, that we can address over manufacturing, over can we really perform to the level we do. You'll be fully satisfied with what we have to offer. That I'm confident in. The demonstration is going to be a little bit different than what you see on that screen. What you see is a picture of the actual unit. To be completely transparent, to give you the opportunity to truly evaluate the technology, we've done this a little bit different. And it's at a little bit more expense on our side. We've taken a unit and we've made it larger. The standard unit that will go out into the field is five feet by five feet by five feet. Just a cube. Pretty small. Very small footprint, produces an enormous amount of energy, but it's a small footprint. The machine you're going to see tomorrow is 8 by 5 by 6. It's a bigger machine. It's not the one that will go out in the field in its container, but it was done specifically so that we could expand everything in that box. Everything. So you have the opportunity to see everything. So all of the Motors, the generators, the batteries, the flywheel, the inverter, all these things are spread out so there are no hidden secrets in there. Um, we consider all of you trusted partners and friends, so you have unprecedented access to see this. You're going to see us remove every single panel from the outside. 
You're going to get the opportunity to touch, to feel. Everything's safe in there. You're going to see everything. You have the opportunity to ask some of the most brilliant minds, I believe, right up here in the front row, who are going to be here over the next two days. I encourage you to do so. This is about being transparent. This is about giving you the access that you need. And this is about us wanting to be a willing partner to work with you. This is really self-explanatory. What you're going to see is a unit that is 100% pollution free. I mean, think of that. You know, you have absolutely no pollution coming out of this. You have an opportunity, um, what I would say, is to kind of do the right thing. But we're not asking you to do it at a premium of price. We're asking you to do it at less than the cost you could for fossil fuel. Less than you can for the cost of fossil fuel. Complete energy independence. Complete, clean, renewable energy. You know, if, 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 if nothing else, if it's not the money, then for gosh sakes, it's, you know, what we're doing to the planet by using fossil fuels, right? So this is an opportunity to, to change that dynamics and to move away from that. You know, we, you know, a lot of people have asked me, well, okay, how do you do it? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that over the next two days. You'll have the opportunity. I'll make myself available to you the best I can um, over the next two days. There's a lot of other people that will help with that. They're in this room tonight. I encourage you after this event to, to reach out to us, let us know kind of how we can help you, um, and we'll make time to do that. The, the real issue with this is, you know, is it a closed system? Meaning, does it just operate on itself? And for me to get up here and say, gosh, we violate, you know, major laws of physics, you know, Einstein's law of conservation of energy, right? Says you get one unit in, well, that's the only thing you're going to get out. You can't get more of that. And, and who would argue with that? I certainly wouldn't. I'm certainly not qualified to do that. But what I would say is that this is not a closed system. This is a system that takes a small amount of external energy, brings it in, utilizes it, and you are going to absolutely be uh, amazed at the ratios we get of energy out. And I'll tell you right now, six to one. One unit of energy in and six units of energy out. I'll say that again. One unit of energy in and six units of energy out. And if you don't take the opportunity to see that for yourself and be completely satisfied, then, boy, um, I, don't know if it, I don't know what else I could do. But it's an amazing thing. Think about that. One unit of energy in and six units of energy out. And you're going to see it. You're going to have the opportunity to take it apart and, you know, to some extent and look at every piece of it and kind of figure it out yourself. There's some very sensitive intellectual property. Um, we'll share as much as we can, obviously, but to some extent, um, you have the opportunity to see all that and to make sure and validate it that it works for you. Um, this is a line diagram. This is a pure example of one particular project. Um, it's different. And the reason I put this up on the screen is to kind of highlight one thing. Um, you know, everyone, I've gotten the question consistently of, well, what's the right size of the unit? Well, how many, you know, what size units can you manufacture? And I will tell you, the one you're going to see tomorrow and over the next two days is a 5KW system. And people say, well, is that the only size you can make? And the answer is no. It's scalable. It's a simple function of motors. It's a simple function of generators. It's a simple function of batteries. But more importantly, it's a simple function of a dialogue between us or the individual country or regulatory agency of what the requirements are. It's fundamentally different when you say, gosh, Doug, we want to put a system on the grid, and we want you to produce as many kilowatt hours as you can. Boy, we're in desperate need of energy. Just go do it. We don't care. You have a power purchase agreement. Just push every bit of kilowatt hours you can. Fine. We'll do that. That's easy. But as everybody in this room knows, that's typically not the case, because typically grids have to plan for amount of energy. Typically, you need to know what that is, and you have to plan accordingly. So when you say to a person, great, go produce uh, 50 megawatts of energy, they mean 50, watts, 50 megawatts of energy. They don't mean, you know, 50.3 or whatever the case may be. They mean 50. They don't mean 49.8 either because you're penalized when you do those things. So we have a unique system that gives us the ability to produce exactly the desired output. We have, an, we have the ability and we have a system that can produce the output required for what we're trying to accomplish. And think of that. 
you know, what office building, what factory, what, you know, if you're off grid, what of, what of any of those things are not variable in energy requirements, right? Right? You know, they're not, they're not consistent. They're variable. The energy is dispersed. It's cyclical. It depends on the time of day. It depends on a holiday, weekends, you name it. There's a thousand different varieties that we have to deal with in that. So when I go and say, great, this is a line diagram for a specific project that works for that project. It's not yours. It's not a standard one. It's not applicable to all. It's an example. My point being that when we're ready to move forward, we sit down with you, we do our site survey, we determine what the most optimal solution is, and we can implement that. And I know some of you want to questions on manufacturing and, and so on and so forth, and let's, let's get into that. Let's talk about that, because I want to make sure we address all those concerns. This breaks down kind of what we're looking at from the system. You know, these are the major end items that you have. Some of these are very, very, very sensitive intellectual property. You know, can, can you kind of look at this system over the next two days and go out and replicate it yourself? No. And there's a lot of reasons why. I will tell you, this took some individuals in this room about four years of their life to figure out. It's taken uh, quite a bit of money to get from point A to point B, I will tell you that. Um, it's a never-ending process, clearly. You know, we're going to continue to evolve. We're going to continue to develop. That's a good thing, not a negative thing. You never want to stay static in these systems. But what we have today um, is exceptional, and frankly, no one else has it. Let me say one last thing on that subject matter. If we were having a conversation today about a system that had one unit of energy in and produced one unit of energy out, I'd say, oh my gosh, that's, that's fantastic. That is fantastic. Tell me, someone, tell me, show me another system that does that. One unit of energy in, one unit of energy out. Doesn't happen. What does happen is one unit of energy in and about 0.7 out or 0.8 out, but it's less than one, right? It's less than one because there's resistance, there's heat, there's all of these things that, that impact the energy flow and reduce that from happening. And I come back to what I said earlier, six to one. One unit in, six out. See it for yourself tomorrow. Some of these, some of the components, and, and I'm going to go through a series of slides of talking about some of the major end item components. And we talk about things that are, you know, tier one manufacturing items, things that, that are basically standard. Solar panels is a wonderful example. You know, we don't, we don't go for things that are uh, not of the highest quality. You know, we've accepted responsibility for the fact that, that we will maintain this system for 20 years. No issues, turnkey operation, not your problem, whether you purchase a unit or whether we're doing it under a PPA or some type of contractual agreement, it doesn't make a bit of difference. We're responsible for the unit for 20 years. That's our liability, not yours. And I say that not only because we back that up not only with just words, but we back it up with a performance bond. That's real hard cash, put in a bank, mutually agree upon, you have access to, if we don't perform, that's your money. We're not in the business of giving away money, I'll put it that mildly. So we're in the business of making sure that doesn't happen, right? So we will live up to our responsibilities and make sure that that happens. Batteries. You're going to see a, a, a wonderful anomaly that's going to occur tomorrow. And let me share with you just a brief story. Two weeks ago, we decided to move this, this, this what you're going to see tomorrow from being on grid, on grid, to off grid, not hooked to a building, but in consultation with uh, NREL, those not familiar, National Renewable Energy Laboratory and others, who we approached and said, what's the best way to test this system? No nonsense, how do you make sure this thing works? Right, so a knowledgeable people, as you are in the audience here and, 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 and listening to us worldwide, how do you make sure this system works? Well, you know, talking to the best experts who do that for a living, folks in NREL and others, they come back and say, well, we don't plug it into a grid. We would certainly not do that. And I say, why not? And they say, well, that, that is, it's dispersed, it's variable energy. You don't get a true test of a system by plugging it into a grid. You can't validate that that system is actually performing to the level it does. And I said, wow, that's good. How do you do it? And they said, we do a load bank. That's the only way you know if that system is actually working. 
whether the reliability of the system works, whether it actually is taking the energy and producing the energy that you say. That's what you're going to see over the next two days. It's going to be on a load bank. It's going to be measured. It's metered in every way, shape, and form, and you have the opportunity to see that. Every single component of this, lithium-ion batteries, as I, as I mentioned, you're going to see the opportunity to see the system perform on different batteries. So when we move the system from on-grid to here at the hotel, on a load bank, to give you the best opportunity to really, really see the system, make it easy logistically, but more importantly, test it as comprehensively and, and the best we can, well, we had to change batteries. And probably some of you in this room know that, that lithium-ion batteries, well, you have to know the voltage, you have to know where you're going, you have to know the phase, right? On-grid was three-phase. Lithium-ion batteries, a certain voltage, right? So we switched to standard, I won't call them archaic, but good, but standard uh, lead-acid batteries. Not car batteries, a little bit more sophisticated than that, but just standard batteries. Batteries aren't the thing. We certainly wouldn't send the unit out in the field with lead-acid batteries. I will tell you that the unit you're going to see tomorrow, and I'm always shocked at this number, is you know, it's 4,000 pounds of batteries. Well, that's not, that's not what this system is about. You, no, no person in their right mind would ship 4,000 pounds of batteries out, out into the field in, in a system. Lithium batteries are very small, very condensed, very powerful. But you're going to see something which I think is pretty unique. The fact that in two weeks, that unit that was scheduled to go on the grid was made into what you see tomorrow. Think of that today. I won't, and I won't, I'll leave you at that right now because you're going to be truly amazed at what you see. The fact that that was put together in two weeks. A lot of hard work and a lot of sleepless nights by the folks in the front row here. But, uh, uh, but nonetheless, uh, available for, uh, for a unique situation, right? A unique situation on the batteries. Um, motors, high efficiency motors. <laughs> Come on, Alfonso. <laughs> I'm sorry to call you out, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to call you out there. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Okay, anyway, all around the world they just enjoyed that was, uh, I won't say who it was who did that, anyway, no comment. Um, uh, high efficiency motors, right? Uh, we have something that's unique. This is one of the areas that is proprietary, we'll talk about it more, but it's just one of the areas where we've gone to something that is, is uh, I will say, unique, that nobody else has. It's one of those components that is, that is very critical to the system, but at the same time, it's not the whole system. It's one piece of the puzzle, and there are many, many pieces to this puzzle. Generator, same comments. You know, unique, different than what anyone else is doing. And, and what I find, and I, I look back and, at all the things that had to happen for this system to be what it's going to be when you see tomorrow. And I looked back at this, and you say, gosh, how did this happen? And I know we've got some incredible expertise up here in the front row. We've got a lot of other people, some in the back row back here who have contributed and helped. Um, but it's been a, a journey of taking some of the best things that have been out there, used for maybe different applications, and applying them and putting them all together to achieve what you're going to see tomorrow. Really amazing, really unique. You know, there's a, there's a tribute to the human spirit when you see that, when you see all that come together. And once again, you're going to have the opportunity to see that tomorrow. This is an amazing piece of equipment, not developed specifically for this. Once again, pretty unique and just in that concept. You're going, to see this, you're going to see this tomorrow. This is an amazing piece of equipment, one of the key pieces to the puzzle, so to speak, um, but really, really an effective tool that enables people to, uh, or energy to be cleaned, energy to be configured in a way that is best suited for what it needs to be. And you'll see it again tomorrow. Um, I talked about this earlier. There's a variety of different size units here. Um, the, the true answer to all this is, is that, look, this can be done in whatever manner you need it to be. It's custom made. It's custom built for the specific project. That's done in consultation with you. It's done in consultation with everyone, with the regulatory bodies, many of which are listening to this, to this broadcast as we speak right now. We partner with them. We do a site survey. We look at that. We give advice. We agree on what those size of the units are to be. Where the, where the units are to be located. And think of the benefit of this. You're going to see a unit that's sit, sitting in the middle of a lawn here on the hotel property. 
and it could be placed anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, and it would, would continue to generate energy. Think of that from when you start to think about internal distribution of energy from moving it from point A to point B, the cost of doing all of that. The reduction in energy from point A when it gets to finally point B and you've lost a great amount of energy along the way. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that anymore. This gives you the option to avoid all of that. It gives you the option, whether we're talking about a building or a remote water pump or wherever, for you to put the system exactly where it's needed. That's, and it's baseload energy. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You know, uh, I've spoke briefly about this, and, and the fact of the fact is that, that a lot of people have put a lot of time and effort into this. And they are people that have a passion. They have a passion for, for what I hope the reason we're all here, and that is making the world a better place. It's helping others. And uh, we have the opportunity, obviously, to, to financially um, be rewarded for that. That's a privilege and an honor and should be used to, to help others. And I think we share that common value. So. We look forward to doing that and having those type of partnerships with you. Um, what you're going to see tomorrow, every component of that is UL certified. There's no issue in terms of safety. Uh, we've had independent third-party validation. One of those gentlemen is here tonight. Um, I have an enormous respect for him. He'll be here for the next two days. Uh, it's Mr. Ken Green from Tanner Engineering. Um, take time to talk to him. I think he's probably one of the most brilliant minds I've, I've heard and listened to in battery technology, then, uh, then, and there's not many of those folks around, right? And he's one of those things. We have a really, really special team up here, every single one of them that have contributed in unique ways. You get to interact with them for the next two days. That's not a bad thing. That's really good. Take advantage of it, please. Um, you know, as we talk about, like, what are, the, what are the real advantages of this system? You know, if you're talking about a you know, let's talk for a moment about, you know, energy generation and the different types we have. Look at a hydroelectric plant. You know, all of us in this room say, gosh, we need energy and we're going to do a hydroelectric plant. Great, let's have our celebration party about 10 years from now when we finally built that plant. Because that's the truth, right? That is the truth. Environmental impact studies, all these, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know it. If you've ever been through that, it's amazing, right? So it's an enormous process. Countries plan for that. But what we give is a difference. We give the ability to have energy in six months. Six months. Tell us what you need, where you need it. We're able to do that because it's easy. It's literally plug and play. When you see the unit tomorrow, it's literally plug and play. It is that easy. Cost savings. Never before could you say alternative energy and say you're competitive with fossil fuels. You couldn't do it. I can not only say today that we're not only competitive with fossil, fuel, fossil fuels in a variety of places, and I'm not referring to island nations that are very, very high in fossil fuel costs, but in, in land-based countries, domestic, continental countries, you are looking at cost of energy lower than fossil fuel. We are far more competitive than coal, far more competitive than natural gas, and those things keep, have to be replenished. We don't. We don't. We don't need fuel. We don't need anything. We don't need enormous space. We need a willing partner. And I hope that's some of you here, and I hope that's some of us on the, on the uh, broadcast worldwide. We offer a 20-year guarantee. I talked about that before. I don't ask you to take a risk, not in any way, shape, or form. I don't ask you to take any risk whatsoever. We'll back it, everything up with a warranty for 20 years. We'll back everything up with a performance bond. I don't expect you to take any risk whatsoever. That's on us. We're confident in what we do. We can do it well. And we're ready to, to move forward. And I hope that's why you're here this evening. Uh, you know, I, I've covered some of this in terms of a fraction of the land that's, that's, that's to be used for this. Um, you know, the, the big criticism, and I was an advocate of this, is solar energy is just a massive amount of land that you need. Go to an island nation and tell them you want to use 300 acres to put a solar plant on to produce a small amount of energy. It's a bad deal. That's a bad deal. We can go and say, hey, we need 500 square feet. You know, we'll give you 50 megawatts of energy. That's a good deal. That's a really good deal. That's us. That's DAC Global. Um, I'm very, very grateful for you to be here. 
over the next two days. I encourage you to take the opportunity to learn more about us, both personally and professionally. Take the opportunity to learn about the system. You know, please, you traveled a long distance to get here. You took time out of your schedule, away from your families. Um, don't leave here unless your questions are answered and they're satisfied. And I, I give you my commitment that you have that. You're going to see that. We've done everything we can to make that happen, both configuring the demonstration you're going to see, making these people, everyone here, available to you. Um, you are welcome to schedule personal meetings, both with myself and my staff. Um, Elliot, can you stand up for a second? Uh, she's the one kind of keeper of the schedule, so, so be bugging her, and she'll, uh, she'll, she'll make sure you get to where, who you need to meet with and when you need to meet with, and she'll kind of keep all of us straight, I hope. So anyway, um, uh, we have some formal demonstrations set. Uh, doesn't mean you go to one of them. You can go to, to all four, as many as you'd like to do. You can keep going back to them. If so, that's not enough. I'll sit out there either for, you know, as long as it takes to get to where we need to be, whether that's good or bad. Doesn't matter, okay? So uh, take advantage of that, and um, I'll open it up to any questions you have right now. You know you're going to have questions over the last two days, but uh, please. Hey, Jameson Slough, um, first, thank you very much for inviting us here. Uh, thank you. reception was fantastic. Thank you. Um, and I speak for you know, all the people that I'm, I'm very lucky to, to bring here today. But could we introduce the front panel just so everyone has a name and face for the next two days? We can. Please, please. Do you mind? Do you mind getting up and introduce yourselves there? Here, I can give you the mic, and you can you can kind of introduce you. Or would you like me to introduce you? Here, you go. I think you guys are better introducing yourselves. Let's do that. Why don't we do that? Because um, so, Catherine Ross, you want to start it and just kind of brief, just. Uh, kind of Catherine your... Ross, I do all the construction for the facilities. She's being incredibly modest, and I'll tell you why. Because, um, okay, so I'm going to get to ad lib some of this stuff here. I'm taking the mic back. Okay, all right. I see they're going to be very um, shy, I guess, camera shy or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, so Catherine Ross, wow. All I can say is wow on a um, building, construction side, construction management side. Holy cow, I wish I had half her skills in kind of project management and detail oriented. And, um, uh, it's just ask her, and about two hours after you ask her, you'll finally walk away knowing that what I know, and that is she's an amazing person with a passion for what we do and a passion for caring about what we're doing. Um, do you want me to do this, or Randy, do you want to? <laughs> Randy Arnston. This is Endelos Power and his colleague, Mike Dana, who's sitting down. I'm going to, I don't know, he doesn't want to stand up, but that's okay. Anyway. Um, really, really exceptional people. Um, you know, it's rare that you find people that uh, share your common values and how you look at life and how you look at, at what a future of what the planet should be and uh, that have a passion for what to do. And I will tell you that are about 10 times smarter than me. So this is, these are two people that are, are really, really brilliant. Mike Dana, uh, Randy, they're available for you. Um, they've accomplished uh, amazing things, amazing things over the last four years. They've devoted a lot of their life to making what you see tomorrow, and it's been, it's been exceptional. So uh, hopefully you'll, you'll, give them, you'll shake their hand after the, uh, at the done. Yes? So what, what component are they, are they providing? Every bit of it. So the question was, what component are they? So, so good question. Thank you. What you see here, even the shy gentleman, Mike Dana down here, is not going to stand up. But anyway, oh, he's going into it. There you go. All right. Good, 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 good. OK. So, so what you see here is a team. And, and we've got some folks in the back here who are also going to be shy, and they're not going to stand up either, but I'll embarrass them later. But we have um, a team. So you know, when you, you sit here and say, well, what's the, uh, you know, who does what? Not the case. I, I'll tell you. Here are the folks that were told, who are probably, uh, probably a little upset with me, Doug, what do you mean we're not doing it on the grid anymore? We're just going to do it at the hotel. And oh, by the way, do you realize what that means? And change everything and put a load bank in there. And hey, it's 4th of July weekend, and it's a holiday. Really? These guys, ladies, excuse me. They, um, they've done an amazing job over a short period of time and, um, and very, very appreciative for what they've done. And I think the planet's going to be a better, better place for it for what they've done. Um, Ken Green, Ken, just there you go. Ken, um, Ken, Ken Green, uh, Tanner Engineering, 
third party validation, took what kind of Randy and Mike were working on and said, hey Doug, that works. And wow, wow, right? And Ken, who I got to know and started to hear and listen to and, and learned what his expertise was, uh, came to me and, and realized that here's a really, really smart guy who really knows what he's doing and is one, probably one of the best minds in battery technology that, that I'm aware of. Um, plays well with others, works well with everybody. So I, you know, Ken went from a role of third-party validation to really helping. And he's done incredible work on designing what you're going to see tomorrow over the next two days. Really, really special guy who is uh, quite exceptional. I talked about Mike, Mike Dana here, Randy, Endless Energy. Um, what do I say about Mike? Mike is uh, a mad, mad scientist. There you go, Mike. I'm sorry, but, but it's the truth. Mad scientist, right? He's a guy who, um, uh, brilliant isn't the right word. It's just, it's, it, you know, what, what's it beyond brilliant? Mike, that's what I can say, right? Mad scientist, put him in a, put him in a room and just feed him occasionally and let him uh, go do his thing, but it's amazing, so pretty exceptional. Uh, the last gentleman we have the privilege of, of having up here in front of you is a gentleman by the name of Mike Galt. Um, Mike is exceptional. He's kind of the, uh, the catch-all, I'll put it that way. Project manager, some amazing management skills, um, able, to get it, able to get things done that are, that are you know, impossible to do, so that's a real good quality. Um, you know, a great team leader, great team cohesion, um, excellent skills in terms of uh, common sense, and that's not a quality that everybody always has, right? So, so this is a guy that uh, has an electrical background, electrical engineering background, and pretty exceptional. Really, really lucky. Really, really lucky that these people work together, all of us. We got some wonderful people in the back here who kind of made all this happen. Um, amazing what you're going to see tomorrow. Just truly amazing. So thank you for your question. Are there any other questions? I know it's going to get quite late here, but Jim. Jim. They are, they're hiding in the back. I don't know where they are. We can embarrass them too. There's Jim. There's Jim. There's Tony. Here are the people that, so, so here, yeah, I'll tell you what, and, and Please, there you go, there you go, okay. So, so you're seeing all the people that really put this together, put a lot of work together, made it possible for all of you to be here tonight, and uh, yeah, really good. So you're welcome to meet with them, talk to them, find out how they interact with this and, and what their contribution is, please. Any other questions? You're gonna get the opportunity over, um, as I said, the next two days, um, and you won't have to listen to a boring uh, PowerPoint presentation, I promise that. So we'll have the opportunity to interact personally in and, a and, uh, more relaxed environment and get your questions answered. Yes? Online question? Please. How can you do it 24-7, 365? How do we do this uh, 24 hours a day, 365 days, seven days a week, right? Um, a year. Um, I'm, I'm assuming they're referring to uh, energy production, not physically working. So um, I'll say that, right, um, for all these folks, right? They, they actually do take time off. So we're going to talk about energy production. Um, here's, the, here's, the, here's the interesting thing, and I get this question a lot. Wow, Doug, you have a new system. How do you know it works? And every time I hear that, I say, oh, gosh, it's not new. You don't understand. Every component in this is tier one manufacturer component that is commercially, commercially, and I'll have a small caveat on there, of, <laughs> off the shelf. Um, but there are things that have been around for a long time. And when you say, how do you produce energy? Generator. Have generators been around? They've been around for, you know, 50 years, 100 years, right? Generators are nothing new. Now we do it a little bit different. We, we configure that a little bit different, but how we do it is we take standard, systems that have been around, proven technology that you know works, that everybody in this room, whether you realize it or not, you get energy from today in some way, shape, or form, no matter where you are in the world. But we do it a little bit differently. We choose not to, to fuel those generators with fossil fuel. We choose to fuel those generators with alternative energy, renewable energy, not pollution creating energy. So we do it uh, simply, we do it through uh, standard operating equipment that's been around for, for quite some time, um, and it's technology that's been proven. So that would be my uh, concise answer to that. So, 
Yes. Another online Please. question. Should you force outage or maintenance periods? Uh, are there, so let's talk about maintenance. The question is, are there forced outages or maintenance period? So once again, and I talked about this earlier, we go and we talk about a specific uh, application for the units. Right, and we talk about whether that's on grid and we just want to generate as much energy as we can and get it out there. Or is it for an office building or a factory or a water system or whatever the case may be, agricultural use, whatever it is, right? You need to understand what that is and what you're trying to accomplish. The system itself, and you're going to see this tomorrow, you're going to see a 5KW system. Well, that 5KW system ideally runs at 3.6 KW, 3.8, maybe 4. And there's a reason for that because we want that extra capacity to be able to deal with that, right? So, so to go directly to answer the question that was just asked, first of all, there's almost no moving parts in this other than the motor and the generator and a little shaft in between the two. So there's very little maintenance. It was developed to have almost no maintenance to this system. But maintenance is our responsibility. And once again, we don't just back that up with words, we back it up with a performance bond. To the issue of, of being able to shut down and have outages. Everything in that system is monitored. We know if there are problems well in advance of if there is any problem. There's excess capacity in the system. It doesn't have to be utilized. The system can be toned down, shut off. Others can be increased during that period of time if that's required. So the answer, direct answer to your question is we are very, very familiar with the uh, I'll say contractual obligations of producing energy and making sure that we're consistent in that. We understand that very well. We do that very well. We do it all around the world today. We meet the exact requirements of energy that we are asked to do. You build redundancy into that. You build protocols in that that enable you to deal with that and not have those fluctuations. I, I, can, I can raise my hand and say there's not one energy project that we have complete it and conduct and is ongoing right now that we have not achieved the exact amount of energy that we've been asked to do. We haven't been under and we haven't been over. I'd love to be over, but they, they, they won't let you be over, but we aren't. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So a little bit, a little bit, uh, good question. So over the last, over the period of time since it's been operational. So what you're going to see tomorrow is the culmination of four years worth of work, okay? And over that period of time, there's been systems running and there's been testing done and there's been the system turned on, turned off and, you know, change parts out, kind of figure out, test things for different uh, 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 reasons, right? Um, and what you see tomorrow is a system that is, um, I think unique would be the, the best way to describe it. Um, uh, that system, the, the I will say the uh, prototype of what you see tomorrow uh, operated for you know, 21 days consistently, performed all, all the tests that we, would, you know, we, we needed it to do, was validated by a third party entity, uh, validated again by a third party entity, uh, had some of the best and brilliant minds that, I, that we shared with you earlier work on that and, and develop what you see tomorrow. So um, in terms of having, you know, multiple years of data on systems, no, uh, no, the, the answer is no. Maybe once a month is just something Oh, like no, um, so, so it was designed not to do that, right? So the answer is no, the answer is, and I'm sorry, the, the question was for those that are around the world and, and not in this room, um, is, you know, what's, the, what's the, the need for maintenance people to come out to the unit? Uh, there isn't one. Everything in that system is controlled remotely, right? There's satellite communication that goes directly to, to, to us. There is monitoring of every component in that system. It can be ramped up, turned down, configured remotely. It's not, you don't require to have a person go out there and do it, right? There's nothing in there that requires anyone to go out and do it. It's, it's exactly like your, your standard substation. You lock it up, you leave it, you only go when you, you, know, when you feel like you need. Um, we, we're looking at, at that, and you look at typically annually, someone will go out and take a look at it if there's not been some other reason to go out and do that. Um, that's it. Yes, sir. Sorry, one more. No, please, please. Kind please. Of, uh, because we're looking to put this remotely into uh, non-infrastructured areas. Yeah. Do we have a dust component 
Yeah, I'd say, you know, so the question is, you know, is this, is this ideal for, um, for remote areas? Let, let me share, and let me, let me share a little bit about DAC Global when I talk about this, because I think this is, this goes to the core of, of this system and what you're going to see tomorrow. Um, you know, we, DAC Global kind of got our start in doing alternative energy and water systems in remote villages, predominantly in Africa. And, and the elephant you saw in the beginning of the presentation was uh, one of our friends is by one of our remote uh, facilities in, in Kenya. And, and we realized that we needed to have a system that was not maintenance free. And we understand that very well, right? I think I, I'm pretty proud of the fact that, that, that we understood that um, providing a system in remote parts of the world that requires constant, constant maintenance doesn't work. You know, for those of you that had the privilege of traveling around Africa and you go to some of the villages and you can find the parts cannibalized of generators and other things just in, you know, piles of junk. And it's a tribute to people that didn't think it through and people that didn't realize, gee, you know, you can't have a diesel power generator in the middle of nowhere with no filters and no gasoline and, and not maintain it. It just doesn't work. Shocking, right? But, um, but, but. In this case, uh, you know, we, we've learned those lessons well. We've, we've researched that. We understand that. That's what you see. That's what you're going to see tomorrow, a system that doesn't need that, that understands those challenging, harsh environments that you have to be able to operate in effectively without any maintenance. That's the difference. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, you won't see a number in that particular diagram. So uh, I, when I say that, and I, 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 it's interesting because I purposely did not, um, many of you who, who uh, uh, I've spoken to before you came here, and I purposely didn't say, gosh, when you come here, you know, you're coming to see a unit, a system that can do six to one ratio in um, energy in and energy out, right? I didn't do that intentionally. Kind of wanted the wow factor tomorrow, but I figured I'd let it cat out of the bag today, right? Um, it doesn't. That, that line, I, that diagram is, is very, very generic. It was intended not to be able to kind of figure that out, quite frankly. So, yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Please. Um, how many units do you have or have you fabricated commercial units? So, uh, good question. And let me talk about manufacturing. We'll get into this more over the course of the day. I would use a different, I would use a different definition of what we do, right? It's not, it's not manufacturing. Others manufacture for us. All of the items, as I mentioned, are all tier one manufactured items from other suppliers who have established businesses that have been out there for you know, 10, 20, 30, sometimes 50 years. We assemble. That's what we do. That's fundamentally easier. Assembly doesn't, you know, you don't have all the same requirements you have for manufacturing. Um, we've committed to, to doing, quote unquote, manufacturing, really assembly, in a variety of different places. Um, overseas, where we have significant projects in certain countries that would service other countries. Um, some of our friends and colleagues uh, this evening that are listening to us right now are coming from Uganda, and we've committed to, to do manufacturing in Uganda. And with the support of, of the Honorable Minister, who is actually listening this evening to us tonight, uh, with her support, we've been able to, to identify a location and move forward with an assembly plant in Uganda for distribution to Kenya, Tanzania, uh, obviously Uganda domestically. Um, those are the type of opportunities we look for. Those are the opportunities we look for. So from a, from a manufacturing perspective, um, assembly, but we really, really depend upon others to do that manufacturing for us. Please. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, I want to thank you. Is there any on the webcast or any other questions that you have? There's Please. One more. Um, well, it's kind of a three part. Define one unit in and six unit energy out. What are the energy inputs? What are the energy outputs? Huh. Okay, good question. Um, define one unit of energy in and one unit energy out. Um, it, whatever you want it to be, I mean, quite frankly, right? So if, if we're saying um, in this particular case, what you're going to see tomorrow is roughly uh, 400 watts of energy in, and you'll see six to one going out. 
that's an example. Um, the question is a little challenging because um, the unit of energy can be whatever it is, but whatever it is, um, you'll find in a minimum we're getting six to one going out. Uh, second part of that question, forgive me. Um, as I mentioned before, it's not a, so what are the energy inputs and energy outputs? It's not a closed system. You know, I don't want you to walk away with the wrong idea, right? You're going to say, gosh, Doug said we, uh, we can create, you know, manufacture energy on our own. No, it's not what I said. It's not a closed system. It's not what it does. Um, it's not a perpetual motion device or some, you know, smoke and mirror thing that, that you, know, you know, we hope it works. Um, it's based on science. It's based on math. It works. The inputs and outputs, some of those are a little bit sensitive. What I will say is kind of refer to the answer to question one, and that is, you know, we have an input from some source of alternative energy. And that's an important point. We've made it a requirement that the source of energy coming in to the system has to be alternative energy. You know, we said, hey, we're going to do this, but we're not hooking it up to a generator. It kind of defeats the purpose of having a pollution-free device when you're hooking it up to a generator to have some energy coming in. We need a small amount of energy coming in. The maximum amount we need is 9 amps. There's a number I'll share with you. 1,000 watts, depending upon the size of the system. No more, a lot less, and the system you're going to see tomorrow, 400 watts. It's all that's needed. Six to one. Not bad. Please. Is that it? OK. Um, we're going to be around. Uh, we'll be up kind of upstairs. You can catch us up in the lobby, bar area up there. You're more than welcome to, uh, to join us. To our colleagues around the world, thank you so very much. I know some of you, it was quite a late evening for you. And uh, for our folks that uh, endured this to 3 o'clock in the morning, you're, you're, uh, you're very, very passionate about what you're doing. So thank you. Um, thank you very, very much. Thank you.